Pastor Sister Rose, please welcome her as she comes. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I 
I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do?
So as I look at that, I kind of got this thought this week. And it was this. What if there was a guest book for hell? What? Would your name be there? Because there's a lot of people that have gone to hell from the beginning of time. But you know what? When God made hell, he didn't make it for us. He made it for the devil and his angels. He didn't make it for you. You know why you're going to go there? Because you made a choice to go there. When you chose not to serve God, you made a choice that I'm going to hell. You may say, no, that's not what I, I mean, that's not what I intended to do. That's what you did. So now when you look at this thing, said if it just as when you were entering hell, if there was a guest book there, would your name be on it? You gotta ask yourself, where am I? What am I doing with my life? Do I have it together or not? And if I would die this moment, can you actually say that I'm going to heaven? And I'm talking about no, you're going. I ain't talking about somebody talking about your job. But if you're not living according to the word of God, for sure, you're not going to heaven. You say, you can't judge me. The word already did it. I didn't have to. It tells exactly where you're going if you read this book. You don't have to worry about it. You know what? If, if we're going somewhere, uh, making a trip, and we're driving, if you don't really know the way, is, uh, a good way to do it is, is, is to read a map if you can read one. And so... You look at that map and it tells you what highway to get on. It tells you where to go over here. It tells you whether you take uh, 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 another highway off the one that you're on. It gives you all this information. If you follow it, usually you'll get where you're going. And so when I look at the word of God, if you want to be sure whether you're going to heaven or not this morning, just look here. It will tell you what the wrong is. It will tell you what sin is. And no sin, period, is going to heaven. You hear people say this all the time about, well, you know what? Everybody sin. Everybody have sin. But when you give your heart to the Lord, that's no more sin. He takes it away, washes you, and makes you clean. Now you got to stay clean. You can't be in and out, up and down. You got to stay clean. And so, as I looked at this, I thought, God, what a horrifying thing it would be to think that I'm really going to heaven. Only to wake up and realize, how did I get here? What happened? I, uh, somebody had a, a vision about this man. He thought he was going to heaven. He was a preacher, in fact. And he thought he was going to heaven. And... When he died in this in this vision that he had, he saw, he started up this place. He said the streets were transparent gold, gold as you and I have never seen. And he says he walked down there, he heard this beautiful music playing. And he said the most beautiful flower that you ever seen in your life was lined up on, on that road. And he had a guide, an angel was guiding him through this. And he said... It was such a beautiful sound. He said to, to, to his God, where's the sound coming from? Because the flowers were just going with the music. And he said to him, that's the flowers singing. He said he never saw such beauty in his entire life. He said he kept walking down and further down, he saw all these beautiful mansions there. And he was curious about that. And the God said to him, uh, those mansions are ready, but a lot of God's people are not ready. They're ready. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And I'm coming again and receive you unto myself. So these things are already, he's already prepared a place. Whether you're going to go there or not is another thing. I wonder if heaven was a place that, that you had your name on your mansion, and I'm, I'm imagining this, this ain't scripture, had your name on there. And because you didn't serve God, they took it off. Because you're not going there. Well, that's what kind of happened to this man. This man, because uh, the guy said, now I'm going to show you hell. 
So he went with him. All the horror, the darkness, the fire burning. And he said he could see the people's bodies in the fire just turning over and screaming and hollering. And they were in unbelievable pain and agony. He said he stood there and looked at it. He thought, what a horrible sight. After seeing heaven and all that it offered to you, look at this. All these people. He said just turning in the flame. It was the most horrifying thing he ever seen. He said, so he said to the angel, well, I'm ready to go now. He said, no, this is your place. And he said, I'm a preacher. He said, but you didn't do right. You didn't do it just because you got the name of preacher. Don't guarantee you that. You got to live a life after you say I'm a preacher. There is some responsibility and things for you to do. And so he said, he looked at the man with this, feel like, are you kidding me? And he said, you know what? You never forgave your wife. She had an affair on you and you never forgave her. And now look where you are now. You can't go to heaven with unforgiveness. So you better think about this morning who you are mad at, who you feel bad about. And I don't like this and I don't like that. And stay mad all your life. This is a serious message. Don't laugh. Serious message. That's why these people go into hell. They sit up in place. So when they hear you talk about hell, like, you are going there. You are going there. But take them in. You want to laugh, laugh on. But I can tell you right now, hell ain't funny. It ain't funny. So think about it. And so when this man, he went back and he came and, and he said, this is where, this is where you will spend eternity. See, eternity is what we can't quite grasp all the time because it is forever. Nothing in this world is forever. You can have good times and it won't be forever. You can have bad times, it won't be forever. You can go through all kinds of stuff and it won't be forever. We don't know what forever actually means. There is no end. And we can't comprehend it. But he said, when he, when the, when, when he put him into the lake of fire, you can imagine, if you get burned slightly here, the pain that you feel. Can you imagine going to hell, burning forever, forever, and forever, and never coming out? And said, I'm sorry, God, he doesn't, he doesn't accept any type of repentance in hell. Once you get there, being sorry won't help you. Nothing will help you at this point. You are there to stay. You can't get out. There is no exit in hell. But the Bible says, hell has enlarged herself. Open its mouth without measures. Why? Because many people are going there. Hell was created at one size. At this point, it keeps enlarging itself to accommodate all of you that are going there. And you got to say to yourself, wait a minute, what do I do not to go there? How do I escape such a place of torment? How are you going to escape it? It's when you go to Jesus and say, I'm sorry for my sins. I need you to forgive me and give me another chance. If you don't do that here, you'll never be able to do it over there. The only thing in hell, though God is there, is nothing but anger and wrath. People treat their lives, and you see them going on about their thing, doing their thing. They act like they're going to live forever. At some point, the scripture says, at an hour that you think not, that you will die. At an hour that you never thought it was your time, you will die. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be a certain color. You don't have to be a nationality or whatever. At a certain point, you're going to die. Nothing would be horror, more horrible than said, I'm, I'm not in the book of life. Because the other book, you don't want to be in that book. Those are the guests that are in hell that's going to that place. So if I'm going to be in, in the book, everything that you ever did in this life, everything is wrote down in that book. It's not like you can go there and lie your way in front of God and say, I never did that. It's a record kept of everything that you do. Everything. Stop for a minute. He said, what am I doing with my life? If I stood before God today, what, what, what would be in that book about me? Because every act, everything that you do, even every idle word that you speak is in that book. That's not a place you can argue a point. That's not a place that you can talk about. 
It is a place where God knows everything we're doing, when we're doing it, where we did it. All these things, he got a record of everything. You can't tell him I wasn't there because the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the earth. He can see everything and everybody. So there's nothing hidden from him. And you know the thing that we put off the most is getting right with God. We're so busy doing all these other things, but we're not getting right with God. And it's more than just occupying a church seat on Sunday morning. It's about a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to make the difference in your life. I saw little people. I saw big people. I saw people of status. I saw the rich. I saw the poor. Everybody is going to have to do this. When once the word says this is what it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. You got to determine in your heart, I got to get my life together and not just talk about it, but do it. As I thought about the guests in hell, I thought about my brother Billy. And he had been raised in church all his life, just like I was. And he left God all because of a woman. This day, he has to repent of what he has. My brother was 45 years old. I had talked to him a year prior to that and said, Billy, you got to get your life right. He said, I'm, I know, Rose, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get my son down and we're going to go to church. I'm going to get right. But he was the jokester in the family. He made everybody laugh about everything. Even at my daddy's funeral, he had people laugh. I mean, he was a nut of the family. I never forget. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to get it right. I said, Billy, don't make it too hard. He said, I'm not, I'm not. I hadn't seen my brother for about 20 years. He lived in LA, and I decided to go see him. Only God sent me there. And I talked to him. He had his uh music playing in the car, and he looked over at me and said, You don't like that, do you? And I said, This is your car. You just like grandma, girl. You just like grandma. But I lived right. My grandmother lived right. He wasn't living right. So listen what happened to him. I left there, there left LA, and I talked to him that morning before I began to uh, to leave and fly back home. And I, I said, Let me be serious with you, Billy. I said, Don't laugh. You need, I need you to be serious about this. He said, Go ahead, Rose. I'm listening. And I said, to Billy. You got to get your life right. You don't want to go to hell. You got to get it right. You don't want to do that. You understand what all this is about. Don't make the mistake and go there. He said, I'm not. I'm not. One year to the date that I seen my brother, I got a phone call that Sunday morning and said, your brother Billy had a heart attack and he's dead. All I could think about was he didn't get it right. And I can't help him. I can't bring him back. God, he didn't make it. I cried and cried and cried and cried. And I said to the Lord, I can't help my brother no more, but help me to preach this gospel that people will give their life to you because maybe I can save somebody else from this. Because I can't save him. It's too late. And I thought about him oftentimes, even now. He's been dead almost, what was 28 years. But even now, I was thinking the other day, I'm so glad I wasn't born my brother. Because when I found out from his wife, and she said we, he had taken Dolly to see, uh, see this picture by Eddie Murphy, I forget the name of it, and, uh, at the movie, and he came back and said, I don't, I don't feel good. I went, to the, I went to the doctor yesterday, and they said they're going to run some tests on me, and then they'll, they'll let me know on Monday. This was on Sunday morning. And he said to his wife, I'll find out what it is then because I'm having these chest pains and uncomfortableness in my chest, but, uh, but they run some tests. They said they'll have the results on Monday. Maybe you've been told that something's going to work out for you by Monday. But the truth is, Sunday was the day that it all ended. <laughs> so that, that morning, my, my, my brother was a drinker, so he had drank, uh, had, a, had, some, had, a, had a drink in a bottle that he hadn't finished. So before he went to bed, he turned the bottle up, and he finished the alcohol. He got into bed. He wasn't there very long. 
And his wife said, she heard him say, mm. So she said, it was dark. So she said, Felix. My, my, my brother's first name is Felix because we called him Felix. Felix, are you okay? He couldn't answer. And she said, then he began gasping for breath. She got up and she turns the light on and she said, Felix, what's wrong? He couldn't answer. And she said, he kept gasping for breath. And I thought to myself, how, what is wrong with you? And he could not speak to her. He was too far gone to have a conversation. Shortly thereafter, she called 911. They sent an ambulance, but he was pronounced dead at the house. She said, I've never been so frightened in my life. And he said, on Monday, I'll get the results. You may think you're going to get some result, but let me tell you, you're in this service for a reason. And the reason God gave me this message, he knew you were going to be here. Yes. I don't pick, open the Bible and just pick up something. I pray and seek God all week. For this Sunday, what do you want me to preach? I want you to tell the people about hell. I want you to tell them how real it is. I want you, them to understand there's two books. And one of those books, you better hope your name is in it. Because if it's not, you're going to be the guest in hell. Stop and think about that. I thought about my brother even this week. And I thought, oh. Because you're never going to come out. There's no time. There's no clock in hell. None of that's present because it's eternity. And I, I thought, oh, my God. Oh, Billy. Oh, my God. I still thought about it after all these years. Think about the loved ones that you leave behind that know that you wasn't serving God and know that you went to hell. There's no clock. That's a whole. I remember when I got to my brother's funeral and I got to the casket and I, I looked at him. I said, Billy, why did you play it so close? Why did you do what I told you to do? I know he couldn't hear me, but I needed to say it. What happened, Billy? I couldn't get an answer. My heart was broken. I said, I got to help people not to go to hell. I guessed in hell. God is my mother. A guest in hell also is my father. A guest in hell, cousins, uncles, people in hell. I'm glad I'm not them. And you can't help them no more. Neither can God give them help because I don't give help in hell. All this time I gave you to live your life, you didn't have to go to hell. You had plenty of time. You know how many people sit in this room this morning and say, yeah, I know I'm going to die, but I'm not going to worry about it. You will when you get to hell. You don't want to go to that and have an afterthought. That's what the rich man did. He died and went to hell. And he said, I need Lazarus, who was the poor man, who didn't have anybody to take care of him. And the poor in this world treated like nothing. As Lazarus was, but Lazarus served God, and when he died, he went to heaven. And so, check this out. But the rich man went to hell. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he didn't serve God. So now he's in hell. You have your memory in hell. This message I'm preaching this morning, whenever you die, you will hear this message. Throughout eternity, you will never be free from it, ever. Think about it. And so, this ain't something that's going to just escape your mind. It won't do it. In hell, people have their memory. This rich man that went to hell, Jesus told this story. He said, Lazarus, I have five brothers I left in the other world. This is memory, good memory. And I don't want my brothers to come to this place of torment. Could you please send Lazarus to them and let Lazarus warn them, don't come to this place called hell. He is having a conversation from hell with the angel that took Lazarus to heaven. And Lazarus and, and the angel looked back and said, no. We don't let Lazarus give up heaven and go back to the world and tell, you, tell your brothers. They got the preachers and the prophets back there. Let them listen to them. He's not going to give up. He said Lazarus in, in that other world, he didn't have a good time, but you did. And I'm not going to pull him from his rest and this good time and let him go back to your brother who would say he wasn't dead anyway. I'm not doing that. Understand. Dangerous. The signs all up and down the road of your life.
life is in danger. Danger. Proceed caution. Don't take this exit. Go over here and do this. And you think I'm doing what I want to do. This is my life. You will regret it. You will regret it. But after all, after all that, it won't do you any good. Stop for a minute. You say, I'm going to listen to what she's saying because she's, she's telling somebody, I don't hear preachers talk. rich man, he was making plans to keep living. We don't know when we're going to die. He said, I'm, honey, I'll be here till I'm 40 years old. I'll be here till I'm this or that. Well, I know I'll be here for that. Not necessarily. <laughs> My friend Lois died in, in Dallas. I tried to get her to accept Christ. I tried. Finally, she came to the point of death. Cancer had eaten up all of this. All of the esophagus, the throat, everything was eaten up by cancer. I remember calling her house and she couldn't answer the phone. And her brother came to the phone and said, Miss Banks, my sister's going to die. And you know what bothers me the most? She never gave her life to Christ. I said, well, Floyd, that's a sad thing because she had those doubts. She was 87 years old. And so... He said, I'm going to put you on the phone with Lois. And I got on the phone, and all Lois could do was, she couldn't speak, but she heard me. I said, Lois, this is for you, buddy. This is what I was trying to save you from this day. I said, I don't know if God will hear you, but please ask him to forgive you. Please, you may not can speak to me, but you can think. Please ask him to forgive you, Lois. I hate to see you go to hell. She didn't ask me to forgive her. Wow. I wish, I hope that he had mercy. He didn't owe her that. He didn't owe her that. Because anytime you talk about God and how she needs to get right, I'm not a bad person. I said, it's not being a bad person. It's whether you're saved or not. It's whether you gave your life to God or not. That's what's going to matter, Lois. No response. She passed away a few days later. My brother said, Miss Banks, my, my sister went to hell. I said, I can't tell you how bad that hurts. I said, I know I lost a brother to something. You got people who love you, people who care about you, and you're not considering them. You just live your life, do what you want to do, and I don't care what anybody thinks. You better stop and think. You better say, you know what? I need to get this right. God knew you was going to be here today. This could be for people sitting in this audience I will never see again. But I got to tell you, after this life, there is a hereafter. There is a place you're going. Now listen to the message. Perhaps you will say, I want to give my life to the Lord today, or else you'll just try to push it aside. You won't have an excuse. And it doesn't matter whether you're Catholic, Presbyterian, and all these other religions, and Pentecostal, none of those things matter. What's going on between you and God? That's what matters. Understand. I got to do what I got to do because. I can't go to that place. I determined I wasn't going to hell. Under no circumstances. I had to make it. I had to win. Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the, and the mean man shall be brought down. And the mighty man shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. God said, I'm going to bring them all down. You can walk around here with your head in there and nobody will tell me anything. I listen to her up there telling me that stuff this morning. I thought to myself, go right ahead because I'm going to live my life and you're going to hell when it's over. You better think about it. You do it your way. Do it your way. But you won't get to heaven. Think about it. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house and on a seat in the high places of the city. 
and to call passengers who go right on their way. They're talking about the Hoish woman. That's, that's what the Bible is talking about. Who is simple. If you're a simple young man, let him turn into this whore. And for him that wanted understanding, she said to him, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. I want you to come in to me. This is something we shouldn't be doing, but come on, come on. This is what the last verse says. But he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Stop and think about it. Man, when you're running around here looking for some woman, you better understand her guests are in hell. When she finishes with you, you're done. You need to set your mind and heart on the Lord and say, God, help me to do the right thing. You will never regret you did the right thing when you stand in the presence of God. You'll never regret it. Don't, don't go to hell, please. Make up in your mind, I'm going to take this serious and I'm going to do what she's told me to do, which comes from the word of God. Don't lose your soul. I'm so glad. I tell the Lord something. Now, thank you for not letting me die in my sins. Thank you that you gave me a chance I didn't deserve. Thank you for pulling me through a situation. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you. And it says, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men they have transgressed against me for their worms shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh he says these people the worm is talking about your soul see everything here on the outside of us is dust it, when you die this body here is going back to the dust but the soul that lives within you that's the one you better get fixed that's where you better make a start. That's where you better say, God, I need to be saved. That's where you better get it right. Because the soul, the, the, uh, I mean, the inner man of you never dies. But the flesh dies. This thing here is called the earthly house in which we live. But this thing here is going back to the dust. But the soul of man has to stand before God and give an account to what you've done with your life. I gave you 50 years. I gave you 20. I gave you 10. What did you do with it? You didn't make things right between you and God. You cannot do it now. You being sorry now won't help you none. It won't help you none. He says, the son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and things and that which do iniquity. And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Gnashing of teeth. That tells you there is some kind of body that engulfs our soul after we leave from here because it says there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. People gritting their teeth for the pain, for the agony. Some time ago, the Lord showed me in a dream. I shall never forget it. I went to hell in this dream. When I got there, there was some room that looked like a sitting room where people were waiting. The room was a dark, unbelievable gray as you have never seen gray in your life. And these people were sitting around in this room, and they were all gray too, this dark, unbelievable gray. But they were sitting there, and they were scared, and they were worried. And one of them got up and said, maybe if we pray, and somebody says, it's too late. Well, what if we, what if we pray? I mean, and every time they said, there's no hope. There's no way out. Somebody says, we can't get out. Hell will not afford you an exit. Once you get there, there is no place to come out. So you got to look at yourself and say, am I going to let myself get hemmed in something like that for a short time considering this life and go to hell forever? Not good. Not good. I don't know if you ever heard of this story. I heard it years ago. It was in Russia. And these men were digging 
to the earth. They were looking for something. I'm not quite sure what it was. But they had to dig way, way down in the earth. Well, after they went so far down where people usually don't dig that far down, they said it started getting real hot. They said, where's the heat coming from? And so they kept digging. And after a while, they heard some people scream. And he said, did you hear that? People screaming and hollering. And after a while, the heat just kept getting more and more intense. They threw their shovels down and took a run. Like, I don't know what we hit. I don't know what's down in that hole, but I'm out of here. That was a, a, a sign that there's a hell way beneath this world. And you can't find your way out. There's no shovel to dig it out. There's nothing. It burns with fire and brimstone. Brimstone is, is called sulfur. It burns and burns and burns and burns. I'm so glad that I gave my life to the Lord years ago. I'm so glad I didn't put it off. I'm so glad that I said yes to you, God, because I can go to hell. And for no other reason, you need to serve God and love him because there's a place of torment waiting on you if you don't. <laughs> what a horrible, horrible place. And he said, I'm giving you a way out. You need to take it. All you got to do is come to me. Give your life to me. Ask me to forgive you of your sins because you can't go to hell with sin. A lot of people ain't going there. The scripture says that the, that the way to hell is a wide road to hell because there's so many people on it. But the road that's going to heaven, it's a narrow road because there's only a stranger every now and then going over that road. Everybody else, the multitude is going to hell and they're all going out of the gate. Hey, don't, I want to be sure in my time that I tell you what it's like that you understand. You understand. Another story I'd like to tell you was when, I guess I was in Washington. I was standing at the brink of hell, literally on the brink of it. And I had my arms stretched out like this. And as far as all this fire was just leaping up with all these People in this fire, and the fire was so hot and so red, and it was horrible. And I don't know how many multitude of people were behind me coming, headed to hell. And I had my arms stretched out like this. And I hear this voice say to me, every person that will come into the tips of your fingers will not fall into that pit. And so I was bumped up with so many people behind me, but on my left and on my right, they were just falling. I'm talking fast, one after another, one after another. I couldn't reach them. This morning, I'm trying to reach you with the gospel of Jesus Christ that says don't go there. You will hear this sound. You will hear this voice. If the rich man can remember his brothers, he said, I need you to tell them don't come here. Most places of torment of people going through something, they want people to come. Come, I need some company. Hell, don't cry for company. Think about it. Don't come here. You'll never get out. This morning, I am that preacher that God showed me Rose, extend your hand as far as you can reach. But everybody that's behind you can't fall in. But the ones that you can't reach, there's going to be a lot of people I can't reach. A lot of people ain't going to take the message. A lot of people going to say, I'm not worried about it. A lot of people say, you can tell that stuff and you believe that. You, you better believe it. It's for real. Preachers don't preach about it much. They tell you to have a good time, enjoy your life. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to enjoy it. But serving him. Not without him. I got to be sure that he's in the right place in my life. I got to be sure that whatever it takes to get to heaven, I'm going to get there. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going to heaven. Yeah, and the minute somebody dies, you know, we say they could be drunk, they could be on drugs, they could be anything, and we'll say, well, they're better off. No, they are not. Because if you die messed up with all that stuff, you can't get to heaven. Another lady had several abortions she had aborted seven babies and she came to the point of her life that she died this is a true story 
she saw this. She was getting ready to walk up. She saw the gates of heaven. She saw all that, but when she got there, seven babies were lined across the entrance. You can't come here. You know you murdered seven babies? And you think you're just going to walk into heaven now? They blocked her. Maybe she thought no more about, but they blocked her entrance to the kingdom. Don't commit a sin in this world that when you leave this world, you can't fix it. You can't fix it. Let's do it right. Let's make run for our lives. You don't know when your time is up. It's going to run out on you. Everybody. Some of y'all going early, some going late, but we all going. So if it comes today for you, are you ready to say, well, I know I will go to heaven. I'm a Christian. I love God. I know I'm going to heaven. You're not going if you're not right. And don't let nobody say, girl, don't worry about that stuff. You are a good person. Jesus died for good people. He, he died for people that's not good. Because he knew you had to have a savior. Carry back, Michael, so you can hear the word. Carry back. People don't want to do it. I ain't going to church. I don't want to serve God. I'm not into all that stuff. You better get into it. I'm not a fanatic. I think you can do some things and do what you want to do, and you'll still get to heaven. Who told you that? If you read this Bible, you will say what she told me is the truth because that's exactly what I'm telling you from. It would be sad to me. I see faces all over this building. Some I've seen for the first time. Some I've seen uh, before. And some um, I will never see again. But at least they got the truth. At least I told you that something was waiting. I, they say Billy Graham, uh, when Miss Reagan died, that she called Billy Graham and asked him, can you assure me that when I die, I'm going to be with Ronnie, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake, shake hands with him, and, and we're going to embrace. He said, yes, you can't guarantee that. That's sad that she, can you imagine if she didn't make it? What a disappointment. She lived for the day she would be with Ronnie again. May not be, maybe, maybe not. I can't tell you absolutely you're going to be with him. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where I'm going. Dangerous. Nothing is worse than somebody setting you up for something and then you get to the other side and find out, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is not, this ain't real. Where's Ronnie? Will you find him? Will you be where he is? Well, any kind of way. The scripture tells us there's going to be two people at the meal grinding. One will be taken, the other one left. You know what that means? One of them was a Christian, one was not. There'll be two sleeping in the bed. One will be taken, the other one left. There's coming a great day of separation. That God's going to separate these people. And the ones that are good, I'm coming to get them. And the ones over here, you're going to have to go to hell. Because I don't know you. You never served me. You never lived for me. You only went to church twice a year. You don't even know who I am. You have put me at the background of your life all this time. Now when you get ready to die, all of a sudden, I need, you know what we say? God, have mercy. Have mercy, God. You say, wait a minute. Everybody's not going to get mercy. You had your chance. You've had a time. You shouldn't be out at the club last night getting drunk and shooting up with drugs and doing all this stuff and Sunday morning come in. That's not going to get it for you. You're going to have to say, no. If I'm going to be a Christian, I'm going to be a Christian. I'm not going to be a drunk Christian. I'm not going to be a, a Christian that say one thing and do another. Stop for a minute. No, I need to get it together, man. I need to get it together. I was so glad that uh, Brother Simmons and, and Pete went to see my friend sitting back there, Zach. I thought you made such a good decision. He got shot in the back. He went to prison for how long, Zach? How? Four years? They never did nothing for his injury. And then they told him, 
Oh, we're going to cut off both your legs. He said, you're not cutting off my legs because whatever infection you have in your back, it will spread through your body and kill you. You're not cutting off my legs. I'm glad you saved me. And Pete says, I go visit Zach. And Zach said, that wound they said would never heal that was inflamed, it's healed. It's healed. And I love, I'm glad I sent him, sent them to you. And he said, I can feel my legs now. These are the legs you wanted to cut off? All you got to do is say, look, I'm going to Jesus. I ain't getting ready to lose my legs. I need to keep my legs, thank you. He said, I want to go back to him and show him that wound you said would never heal and the inflammation, it would kill me. It's all healed up. Constantly, I talked to him. Every time he come up on Sunday, he comes back. And I, I was so glad to hear the testimony when he told Peter, Brother Simmons, man, I, I finished with all that life. I'm going to do it right. I'm going the right way. If he could heal the wound, if he could fix the legs and bring feeling, you think he's going to leave out the feet? I don't think so. God never starts something he don't finish. Now I'm going to give you this much. Now where are you going, boy? I'm going to church. That's, that's what I want you to say. That's what I want you to say. I'm going to church. My heart goes out to this boy every time he came. I didn't know him, but he started coming on Sunday. and I kept saying, Zach, keep coming. Keep coming. Now I'm going to meet with you. We're going to have a, a real good talk. Yes. But think about it. He could have died with that injury. You know how many times God has given you another chance you didn't deserve? How many times did you get another chance? You didn't deserve another chance. He gave it to you out of his mercy. And says, for some reason, I'm not going to let Zach die from it. And for some reason, I'm going to take care of this boy. What, I'm preserving him for such a time as this. Yes. Think about it. I look at your life and say, if I give my life to God, man, I got it going on. I don't have to worry about nobody hurting me. I don't have to worry about anybody doing something to me. I don't have to worry about it. Man, this is a good life. Serving God is the best thing you could ever do. You say, I just got to have me a high because I can't cope with life. With Jesus, you cope with life. Because he's there to help you and give you the strength to do it and push you through. If you really want to make it, you have to make it with him. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Think about it. See? Fire and brimstone. You know, you don't want to be there. If I can somehow get it across to you, the importance of you saying yes to God and making a start. That if your death, if your time to die was was coming soon, at least you got right. At least you went to heaven. At least you didn't die and go to hell. This is what he says. He that overcometh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, think about this, a lot of scared people in the world. The fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You better hope that you come up, your name is written in the book of life for the first death. Because if you in the in that other one, oh my God. The first book means I got life eternal. The second book means I got hell eternal. Are you on the guest list? If you could see that book this morning, where are you at? You know what? I never thought about that. Better start thinking. I better think, where, what is this? I ain't giving up God. I've been serving God. I gave my life to God 50 years ago. I was in my 20s. You know what? I'm having a great time. Join me, honey. Join me. Well, let the devil tell you, yes, boring. All you can do is go to church. You can't do this, you can't do that. Let me tell you, before I spend one day in hell, I can do anything I need to do. I can make it. 
one moment, if you had one person this morning to come back from hell in this service and say to you, it ain't worth it. You're doing it your way, it ain't worth it. You said you don't have to listen to nobody and nobody's going to change your life, it ain't worth it. When you're smarting off and getting really mad at somebody and I don't like what you said, it ain't worth it. Stop for a minute. I'm going to get my life together. You know, a man's looking for everything but God. He's running over here. Look, I want a job. He's running over here. I want me a, a girlfriend. I want me this. I want. Where's God at? Do you want God? That's what's going to make the difference. Do you want God? We're trying to build a life with God not in it. Anything that we build that don't, that don't include God falls apart. That's why you're depressed. That's why you're down and out. That's why you don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can make it. Some no good girl kicks you to the curb and vice versa. And you're around here talking about, uh, she's my soulmate. Uh, you ain't got no soulmate. There's one soul here. It's yours. You better be sure you get it right with God. Hell is real. Hell is real. These preachers don't talk about it no more. They tell you everything else but about hell. They tell you going to heaven anyhow. No, you're not anyhow. You got to get it right. You got to push with everything you got. And I want you to do it. I want you to do it. I love you. I care about you. I'm glad I have the opportunity to warn you. Nobody goes to hell without warning. Nobody dies without God and didn't know. You better not pass in Colorado Springs Fellowship. You're going to know. Look at your life. Say, I'm going to change things. This morning, rest assured, this is your time. This is your day. God's giving you the chance to say, okay, you heard the message. What you going to do with it? Now, he knows when you're going to die. You don't know. Nobody knows the day of their death. Now, what you going to do? He said, be ye all so ready, for you know not the day nor the hour. When we come for you, be ready. I'll just leave one message on, on, on board. Be ready. You can be ready. You can. I went to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm messed up. I'm the worst thing on the planet. If you have mercy on me and save my soul and give me power to say no to sin so I can live for you at the end of the day, I go to heaven to live with him forever. Come on. You can do it. You just got to look up and mean it in your heart. God, please forgive me of my sin. Please give me another chance. I want your power in me. So no matter what the devil comes with and what he try to do to me, I can say no to sin and yes to God. And you cannot do that by yourself. You got to have God. This journey is difficult. But you put God in it. Let me tell you, it's smooth sailing. You can make it. You can make it work. This morning while you sit there and you hear this message and our musicians are coming and the singers so they can... Uh, play and sing for you. Come on, you won't hear that beautiful singing that was in heaven and the transparent gold streets and the peace and the joy and the excitement and the happiness after you leave this world. He'll make you happy while you're here. Boy, when you leave from here, can you imagine seeing heaven? Not a bunch of demons hanging around your bed coming to claim you? That's what happened to my father-in-law. Before he died, I tried to talk to him about his soul, talk to him about his soul. He, 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 used to call me, uh, he used to call me Mother Ross. Mother Ross, you need to just let it go. I said, Herman, you got to get your life right. You don't know when you're going to die. Here come Mother Ross again. The devil came and got him. He said, don't y'all told the family, don't leave me. Y'all heard back because they already been here for me. The demons came already. They coming back. They said they'll be back here in a few minutes. Don't nobody, don't leave me by myself. This is the same man who said, Mother Ross, you need to leave. He, he should have listened to Mother Ross. He should have said, I'm going to do what you say. It's for your benefit for you to serve God. God's going to be God whether you serve him or not. But you need him. So whatever sin you committed, say, Lord, forgive it. There's no sin he won't, he won't forgive. That's forgive me of my sin. I don't just want to be a churchgoer. I want to be a true Christian. One who loves God. Yeah. That's what you want to do.
Michael, you want to be a good Christian? You want to give your life to the Lord? Say, Lord, save me. That's nice that you like music and, and like to dance and all that, but you need God. The Lord, I need you in my life. I've been going to this church, and I can you can get out with the music, but that won't take you to heaven. You've got to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Help me. I love you, and from the day you came here, the hand of God has been reaching out to you. Michael, come on. Michael, come on. We're not getting younger, believe me. Every day you live, you're getting older, which means you got less time in this world than you had when you started out this morning. Come on, you need to do that. Okay, while they sing and play, when you stand to your feet, I'm going to ask you, would you come for prayer if you want to get it right? If this is your last day, your last time, you got to get it right. Don't put it off.